Welcome Lobo Hockey fans to the first ever edition of Behind the Ice, where we take you behind the scenes and outside the arena where we have exclusive interviews with not only the players, but the coaches as well. Today, our first interview with head coach Grant Harvey, where the Lobos will be headed to Columbus, Ohio, where they get ready for their first ever appearance in the national tournament. We'll talk to coach and give him the hard-headed questions about how he feels and how the players are preparing for this big tournament. Not only that, He'll be answering your questions and some five random facts about the team that he thinks he knows. Join us now as we take you behind the ice. Welcome, Lobo Hockey fans, to the first ever edition of Behind the Ice. We are here with head coach. Grant Harvey. Grant, thank you for joining us on the program. Yeah, thanks for having me. Man, no problem. Hey, how you feeling, man? How's it to finally feel to be going to nationals? Yeah, it's, it's a huge relief. Uh, it's been a long time in the making. Um, it's it's great to skip regionals, and it's, it's nice to have a national berth and get some uh, the recognition I think we've deserved for the last four or five years. Good season on the year, 24 and, and 1. Uh, how do you feel about this year's team? Uh, well, you know, the, we, we put it all together, you know, McKenzie Smith and I were talking before the season and we thought, you know, this is a year to make a regional push. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasant surprise that we did, uh, we did even better than that, but we, we all agreed this was a year to, to, uh, to, to get, uh, uh, further than we ever had before. At the beginning of the year, we asked you how you felt about this team. Yeah. How do you feel from then till now? Um, they proved themselves. I mean, they did everything that I asked and more. Uh, they performed in tight games. We came back from um, near losses and, and had the character to pull out these, these big wins. So I'm impressed. I'm not surprised about our outcome. I'm just impressed that we used all of our potential talent. You had a, a lot of young players, a lot of new faces to this year's roster. How well do you think they performed and who made the most improvement? Okay, so you, you, you can say uh, young and new. So we'll say new James. He's not exactly young. New <laughs> uh, was uh, impressive. He, he put on some big games for us, saved us uh, from some near losses and, and took over a few games. Um, my, my rookie chance is just, he's, he's everything I thought he was. Performed big. He has a lot of locker room voice and his performance is, uh, is, is, is one of the best rookie performances I've, I've seen. Um, and I think my most improved player is uh, Mike. Uh, Mike was a recreational player outpost, and, and he just got better through practicing with us, and he just has a good hockey sense, so it was nice to see him develop. We also liked uh, uh, Jack Kelly, Isaac Dunwoody, you know, new faces. Those two really impressed us towards the end of the year. Yeah, you know, Isaac, Isaac had a, a game against NAU where our veterans just couldn't find a way to put the puck in the net, and Isaac mm -hmm. had a, a magic touch, and that's it's just... It's, that's a hockey for you. You, right. you get some guy who looks at the game different and says, oh, this scoring is easy against this team, and, and uh, it worked out great for us. How do you feel about Jack Kelly? Small guy going into a big program. Yeah, yeah. you know, Jack was a little reluctant. He had, uh, he's a smaller guy. He's finding his groove now. It, it did take him a little bit to, to find his niche in college hockey because of the, 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 the disparity in size between right. youth hockey and, and college. And you also have another Smith brother on the team, Spencer. What an addition! What a defender that guy is. He, he came in big. You know, we had a, uh, Garrett got injured, and you know, spent with defensemen. I kind of like them to watch a year of hockey because it's it's where I scrutinize that position the most. Right. I was a former defenseman, and I feel like you have to play a flawless game or near flawless. Um, and you know, Spencer just stepped up and and uh, arrived to the occasion, and he did really well. Um, I. I didn't know how much playing time he would get, but he performed under pressure. It was impressive. He was big in those last two games, yeah. especially against the Mines. Yeah. Uh, He's one of the hardest working guys on my team. I, I, I feel like uh, the other players should be inspired by, by how much effort he puts out there. And he's not like his older brother. You know, McKenzie's the talking type. He's the quiet one. Yes. It, it's hard to get him to talk during interviews. You know, so McKenzie w uh, was almost as quiet as, as Spencer. So I think that's one of the neat parts about hockey is watch their character development and watch uh, what they, they grow into. So McKenzie was a, a quiet guy too, but um, hockey gives you that voice um, and confidence to be a leader right. and, and, and inspire other people. You played a, uh, a difficult yet fun schedule this year. 
looking back, what did you learn from each game and each series that you played? Um, okay, so we had th those two opening series, which let me know what kind of team was going to respond to uh, a deficit uh, against uh, School of Mines mm -hmm. and uh, Mesa, where we were down most of the game, made a late goal and then won in overtime and, and the Mines game was big where we won that in overtime. Um, I think there's a difference between feeling like you can keep up with your competition right. and, and, and beat your competition and that's where this team is uh, different. Like we firmly believe that we're going to win instead of giving it our best shot. We, we feel the game's ours before it begins. Uh, a couple of losses and, and a tie on your record. Yeah. What are some games that hurt you the most and what helped you the most? Um, okay, so the the game that could have hurt us the most was our actually our last game um, against School of Mines where we lost 3-2. How we responded was going to be monumental. And so um, the worst game and best game that happened to us was probably that Mines game. That Mines game showed us that uh, where we lacked our deficiencies and it, what it did is inspired us to turn it on in our last game to blow them out and, 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 and secure our, our spot in, in the our number two seeding. Now a couple of losses to the division two school of Dallas yeah. Baptist. How did it feel playing them this year? Did that give you guys a boost in confidence knowing that you can go up against the bigger squads? Uh, you know what it, what it did is maintain our play and our um, our skill set. I mean they were, those are those are two uh, losses that were I think we lost by one point. Right. I mean they were a great team and it was neck and neck. It, it, it sharpened us. It, it, it was good. I, we weren't too harsh on ourselves about the losses. Um, I, I was more impressed that our guys were able to come back and and you know travel and beat them on, in their eyes too. So you kept it close every game. Not yeah. one game where you lost was right. it a blowout. Right. Um, you were all one point losses. Yeah. So what did you tell the team to learn from that? You know going forward. Um, you know, I feel like any time we lost a game, we just ran out of time. Uh, we we were always winning games by, you know, but minus the, the school of minds, we were always winning games in the last 15 seconds. Um, when our backs are against the wall, it's it's the Lobos are the only ones that can beat the Lobos. And, and so, you know, we perform well under pressure. That's, that's one... Um, highlight I think that I picked up on every game that um, in the third period we're not victims we do something about it. Yeah and especially third period motions run high things like that how do you keep the guys cool especially when the other team starts to get in their head a little bit? You know our, our I've seen the bi the biggest um, what how would I term it um, mutiny on the benches when they actually have a huge lead because what happens is people forget about the team part of the sport and they're bickering over small things when you have a one goal deficit you buckle down you're not worried about trivial things so I mean when we're when we're losing or it's close the, the team actually is more cohesive than ever the bigger the lead I don't want to see big leads the team starts <laughs> bigger about you know uh, minute stuff but yeah we we do well and with our cohesiveness when we're behind you got a couple chatter boxes on your team you know especially we we've, we've heard it through our yeah. mic you know you get upset when they start to mouth off to their team. You tell them to stop. You know how does that go in, especially nationals? You can't afford to have anybody in the penalty box. Yeah, we've had a few incidences where someone does something selfish, and one of the biggest perils about coaching is reminding them that getting even costs your whole team. It's a selfish move to to take this, those bad penalties. I don't mind if someone gets hooking or tripping, or um, they just played extra hard and got a roughing. Uh, but when it comes to misconducts and, and such, that's, that'll kill us. And, and I've made it clear that uh, if anyone does that in nationals, the outcome won't be so fortunate for us. A couple seniors leaving uh, for sure on your team. Uh, can you just uh, tell us who's leaving for sure? Because a lot of people have been questioning, you know, because you said at the beginning of the year there was four of them there on the bubble. So can you explain who's for sure leaving? And yeah, so how that's going to hurt you? Unfortunately, our, our number one two punch of uh, Jackson Farnholds and Austin Short will be leaving. Um, just they aged out and it wasn't voluntary. They would play ten more years if they could. Uh, so that'll that's my first two, um, my 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 center and my forward and my first line. So obviously we'll have a little big a little bit of a void uh, for next year. But I feel like we have some upcoming talent that should fill in nicely. There's no replacement for those two, but it gives the other uh, the the kids behind them um, time to flourish. I think fans are going to miss Austin Short. What a great puck handler he's been. Yeah. Always awe in the crowd when he's making a move towards the goal. Um, who are you going to miss out of the seniors that are leaving? 
Okay, so our you know we have some potential seniors like with McKenzie and Logan and uh, um, Nico being on the fence, and obviously James. I'll miss James. James is graduating, so um, he'll be leaving the program, um, and possibly Graham. Um, I you know Jackson's had quite a year. Jackson had a breakout year. He had a slump last year, and for mm -hmm. for how much talent he has, it was I felt a little disappointed. But he he is really um, captured the moment this year right. and knowing it's his senior year and did not disappoint. I, you know, I'll miss him, but you know, Austin Shorts, um, he's a great leader and he great, gives great speeches and he's been such a good captain to me. I, I'm, I'm harsh on my captains and, and he, he takes it in stride and he performs rather than uh, complaining. Like he, he goes out and does something about it. Now, you're losing your captain. Is there any idea next year who, in your mind, um, who who should wear that C next year? I don't know. That's a that's a summer um, uh, pondering I have to do. There's a lot to being one of my captains. Um, I was a former captain. I take great pride in what it means. I feel like the legacy of the previous captain speaks for itself. It's going to take some time to figure it out. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. You don't always put your best player. Um, you you got to fit the the leader on ice, off ice, and. Uh, the total package, so it's it's yet to be determined. So if you had to choose today, you couldn't think of anybody right now. Well, I, I, there's a lot of candidates. <laughs> uh, it's just hard for me to to, to pick, pick, you know. Yeah. And I've got to see who's for sure coming back and, and such. I mean, I, I have the I have the luxury of, of having multiple people to choose. Um, so you know that's why I have so many captains. I have so many leaders that you know no one will feel slighted if if someone's a captain over the other. And that's why my team is uh, so neat about. Um, uh, accepting leadership and and not being um, uh, being petty about any decisions I make as a captain. And that makes you guys unique. Who who knew you guys had one team captain and four assistant captains? Usually, when you look at a NHL club, you have one captain, two assistants. Yeah, you have four. Yeah, I was one of the the well, I was the only college coach to make one of his uh, his goalies an alternate. But we we work a little bit different. I'm not your average coach. We don't have your average team. We we run things a little bit different. But you can't argue with the yield. So Valentine's Day was a big day for you. Yeah. Not only was it your birthday. Right. Happy belated birthday, Thank by you. the way. But you found out you're going to nationals. Yep. You saw what pool you're in. You're in Pool B with a big name school in Michigan State. Yeah. Describe that day, how it went from the moment you woke up to the to the practice at night. Yeah, I woke up. Uh, I woke up at eight, and if you know me, that's like everyone's four a.m. <laughs> um, so I, you know, got dressed, put on my suit, and uh, put on my birthday suit. And it's not what you think. It's my actual <laughs> birthday suit. Um, and arrived at the school, and I was nervous and pacing, and they were making the announcements, and they went through all the regions up, up until Pacific, and I was just prepared for any answer because previously I was assured we were going to go to regionals the previous four or five years, and it, it just didn't happen. So, you know, this new algorithm, I felt a little bit more confident, but it, it wasn't up to, to human discretion, but you just never know. I mean, that one loss... I, I don't have the algorithm figured out. I'm a, I'm a math guy, and I still was like, I, shoot, so what, how are we going to end right. up? But when we saw that 3 and 10 uh, was Colorado Mesa and 10 was Wisconsin, it meant it wasn't us. Therefore, we were 1 and 2. I was the happiest guy. You know, that's one of the biggest moments in my life. I've had a lot of neat things happen to me, but, like, the, the program's my baby, and this team means so much that I was, I was happy for uh, – my players it, it makes me happy that that they uh got to see something that i never did in my in my career i never got to go to national so so later on during the day you're taking in the emotions yeah. how did that affect the night practice what was in your mind that saying all right guys it's nationals it's a whole new program we got to work harder now well, I, I would tell you, if we ended up going to regionals, there would have been some, some resentment and, and uh, no one would be focused. I felt like we belong in nationals. My team knows that. And when we went to practice with the purpose, so we had our goals uh, a set for nationals, achieved it, and now f practiced like we have to go to nationals. So um, our mindset's different um, now that we... Uh, our mindset is different being that we were going to go to nationals and our work ethic increased. So... Um, I don't know, you just take the tournament so serious, it, 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 there's not much decision making. It's right. innate to, to respond like they did. What were your feelings when you saw Michigan State in your pool? We've seen highlights, uh, us here at the Global Hockey Networks, they look like a pretty good, decent team. Yeah. 
But that shouldn't fear you, right? You know, I, one of the other unorthodox things uh, that I don't do is I loosely keep track of teams. Maybe I'll see who their scores are. But in, the, in, the, in all reality, we have to play our game. We're going to play some talented teams. We're going to play a lot of teams that look like the Lobos that have seven or eight scores. Um, but we, I feel like when we're on our A game, no one can take us out. So when you see a Michigan, you know, we were going to reach a number one seed. We're going to have to face somebody. So fill in the blank. It's Michigan State. Fine. I mean, if we're supposed to go as far as I think we can, then we have to play Michigan State somewhere down the line. So let it be in our pool and set the tone. Now, as we speak right now, this will air in a, in a couple of days, but as we speak, regionals is going on right now. Yeah. We're finding out who the last two teams are going to be joining you. Is there any teams that you saw during the, the scores that you would like to have in your pool? Yeah, I don't know much about them. Like I said, I don't, I don't know how they fare. I mean, even within our own region and Pacific, there's some teams that were, you know, I loosely was following how they played each other, but I haven't seen any of their gameplay. And that's really the only way. I mean, you can, you can watch stats and uh, results of games, but until you see the team, it doesn't mean much. And, and we all know how hockey goes. I mean, a, a bad team can win at any given night. So um, it's, it's hard for me to gauge how these teams are. Well, we'll see them, and uh, not much more than that. I, I, we'll, we'll figure it out when we, we get you to see them. see them, right. Can you tell us how nationals work? How do you get to the championship game? What's the, okay. the process of going there? So it, there's four pools. There's 16 teams in the tournament. If you survive your pool, you do, you do the best, uh, whether it's uh, most wins goes first, and then it's head-to-head. -head and um, it, after that, you play the other pool above you, in the semifinals, and right. then and then there decides who's going to go to the national championship. So it's a round robin, pretty yeah, much. You got to play round, everybody yeah. in your. So how do you feel knowing that's a round robin? You're guaranteed at least three games. You know, it's it's good and it's bad. I I I, I have a problem with regionals being that it's it's a it's a one and done type of thing, a single elimination. Um, the other th the other caveat is if you're a hot team you just want to keep rolling instead of saying oh man okay now our second game we have to do well when you go into pool play and to survive in the ACHA championship that essentially means you won five games in a row and because most likely you have to win them throughout right. your pool five games in a row that's a tough that's that's a tough march so no matter what team you are I mean you, you basically have to come with your A game uh, five, you know, that's, that's, imagine winning the Stanley Cup and they say, okay, you have to win all five or you're not the, the one who gets it. Like, that's tougher than any other sporting right. competition out there. So. Right. So, how tough do you have to be on the guys now in practice, knowing your situation? You know, there's, a, there's been you know, a, a couple lackluster performances so far leading up to nationals in terms of attendance. Hope to get that corrected. The, for the most part, I would say 95% of our team is focused and know this is a huge moment. Um, so it's not hard. I mean, they get the gravity of it. I, I know my voice can only extend so far. The guy's got to believe in it and have a, a personal work ethic that uh, I can tap into, but it's got to be on their own recognizance. So what do you do with the one, that 5% that's not really focused right now? What do you got to do to make sure that they're prepared? Cause it's, it's been a month since you played. It's, it's, that's, that's another tough thing about going, you know, the regional team has had a, a couple warm-up games to say, right? By the time you made it here, you might be a little bit sharper than us, so to speak, because of your, your gameplay. Uh, for the five percent that aren't there yet, you know, there's 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 teammate, there's peer, um, uh, there's peer conversations, guy to guy. And you know, of course, there's some coaching intervention I did, but I mean, it, it should be remedied. But for the most part, um, we're okay. But yeah, the, the guys that are coming out of regionals are probably the sharpest tool uh, so far. Right. Yeah, just by natural. Um, uh, progression of, of playing even higher caliber teams that leading up to that they probably have the best warm-up do you feel you guys are ready I don't think we're ready yet we have a few we have a few areas to sharpen I feel like our power play could be refined um, again the, the the hard part about practicing yourself to death is like what does it mean when it comes to the game you know there's there's know-how and then there's uh, putting it to use right. so we're almost we've almost full right we've studied enough are we ready for the exam or we're pretty close now this is the part of the show where you call out your players but who needs to step up 
Um, I, I believe we've had a conversation. Graham needs to, and Graham, uh, Graham's had a full load of school, and he's got he's got good he's got a good excuse. Um, but we just need him to buckle down. Uh, he's a great player. He's he's uh, integral to this program. Um, but that's that's probably like the main uh, aspect of the difference between us uh, killing it in, in nationals and not. Yeah. So now that you're you're pa- you guys are are getting ready to go. How's like the flight situation going? How's the hotel? Yeah, we got all that. We got all that arranged. So yeah. that makes it a lot easier for you, right? Yeah. Because that's one of the things you stress about: is how are we going to get there? Who's gonna, who's going to be able to come? Are there any issues with any of the players saying, "Coach, unfortunately, I just can't go"? Okay. Well, we just had this come up. James Boston um, had to pick whether he was going to miss Tuesday or he was going to miss Friday. Now, here's how the games go: we play Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and pool play no matter what. I'm a guy who says, we'll figure it out when it gets to, but he absolutely has to fly back on Friday to do uh, one of his finishing uh, classes for his course. It's just non-bending, athlete or not. So if we happen to win the group pool, I mean, that's something that I would rather get there and then figure it out. So that's that's one thing that's come up. Right. All righty, Grant. Now let's move on to recruiting. Um, In terms of recruiting, what are some of the steps you got to do in finding players? Well, luckily, uh, our notoriety speaks for itself, so that's helped out. Re- that that kind of recruiting is something that is uh, irreplaceable. So, right. the the program's success has has uh, caught people's attention, um, and, and there's been you know even from previous years' success, there's been a lot of California kids that inquire about the program. They like the cheap tuition here. We obviously have no scholarships to offer, uh, so we have to basically lend ourselves to. Um, quality of education, um, quality of our team, and uh, the the cheap tuition. Uh, so that's one of the, that's a recruiting tool. Um, there are some players that uh, are now looking to um, recruit from their own uh, pools uh, in uh, San Diego, and uh, Jared is going to try his magic in Minnesota. I wouldn't mind a few more Minnesota kids. Um, and we have some U18 players that, and U18 is uh, youth hockey up until high school. We have a couple players joining us, and we've got a, a stellar uh, kid from Colorado Springs that's going to join the team who's a phenom. So, How'd you get the kid from Colorado Springs to come um, here? So his, uh, his, his, his last name is Weaver. He's, um, he's friends with a lot of uh, guys in the program. He, he's played some uh, midget hockey up in, in uh, high-level midget hockey in Colorado Springs. And... Um, he was interested in the program for schooling and um, that we're a good team. And, and he knows a lot of guys on, on the, the, the Lobo. So that was extended itself to an easy transition for our team. And he's a good player, hopefully. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll see I, him as... I, I've seen him play and I've, I've heard a lot of good things. So I'm, I'm, I'm already impressed. So you guys do a lot off the ice yeah. as well. You guys do, you know, the Animal Foundation and... And then other charitable work around the city. What are your plans for this, the team this summer to continue that? Well, we'll keep helping out the wildlife refuge. What we do is we rehabilitate um, animals that are brought into that shelter, feeding them, cleaning cages, uh, uh, monitoring or, or charting their progress. Uh, I, I feel like we put a little bit more on the plate. You know, every year I. I I add more philanthropy and, and civic duty, and my kids are wonderful about joining with me. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that, I, I'm welcome to any suggestions. I, I want to do more work. I want to do more work at children's hospitals. I want to do more uh, veteran work. Right. Um, I, I would love if someone has any ideas, I, I'll entertain them because that's something I believe in. If you guys know anybody out there, hit up Coach Grant. You can hit him up on their, their Twitter um, or yeah. their own Facebook. Even yeah, our I have, Facebook. I have a Twitter account. If you guys... I, it's minimal content, but you know, every once in a while I get a, a jokes and some, some insight as to the team. So Now, talking about jokes, we got to know, how did this Coach Care start? It, it's a fan favorite. Yeah. I mean, every time we post it, it gets likes. What started Coach Cares? Well, you know, there's if, if anyone's watched um, networks that show NHL teams, you know, every, every NHL team has either Fox following them or they have these local commercials, and they're usually really bad. So I thought, well, I can make a better bad commercial. So I made mine. I made these Coach Cares. They're cheesy. They're hokey. Uh, but they're fun for me to make. And I know some of them are terrible punchlines. But 
that's what's fun about it. It's kind of ironic. So that, yeah, I, I, I enjoy it. The kids enjoy it. We, we, we kind of come up with scripts and wouldn't it be funny if so, you know, to just like today we're rollerblading. I decided let's do one. So check it out. It's, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> if you guys want to check it out, you can head to Coach Grant Harvey's Facebook, even the Lobo Hockey Network's Facebook. The UNM, posted it. Yeah, the UNM uh, Facebook page also. Yeah, check that out as them. well. Uh, so a lot of people have been asking scheduling. Yeah. Now you're already working on it. You got some teams lined yeah. up. But a lot of people are asking, when will we see the bigger schools, the Nebraskas, the Air Forces, the you know the the, the color there are Colorado schools that are big and the California schools. It's a proximity issue. The Nebraska team is is has been kind of uh, prima donnas about traveling. I think they may feel compelled to travel now um, that we're a contender and and it, it's good. You know. Uh, um, Competition is good for the breed, uh, but you know Air Force has tight scheduling. Um, if you you know teams that are just far away, it's a budget issue. You know a lot of schools, hockey teams aren't their first priority, so uh, the school has to work out. The teams have to work out. Well, how are we gonna how are we gonna meet? And so that takes money. So I mean, if uh, if there was unlimited funding, I, I could guarantee you we'd be doing uh, uh, more games. Our, our Texas Tech. Um, relationship fell in that they joined a Texas league and they actually folded this year. I mean, it's, it's really tough to keep a, a, a pseudo non-sponsored school into mm-hmm. hockey. So um, I'm up, I'm up to playing anybody and I'm confident in our boys. Um, it's just the logistics of uh, playing someone within your division. So you have to, you know, we found out this year playing a division two school doesn't help your ranking. It, it's just, it's a, it's a outcome and doesn't factor into the algorithm. So now you have that into play into part like our UTEP, they went up to division two. So then it wasn't in either of our interest to go play each other. So that's, there's a lot that goes into it now. I, I would love to see UTEP back here. It would be great to get the Battle of I-25 back. Um, you know, start, that was a good rivalry. I mean, when yeah. they came here, it was packed. And then when you guys went down there, it was also packed. Yeah, they're a good program. I, I, I'll see what we can do. You know, if we're going to extend ourselves to some Division two, we might as well go play our neighbors. I kind of like beating them. <laughs> we didn't have our way last year. We had our way the first year. But I would like to get that going, too. And I'm, and I'm sure there's some transplants uh, from El Paso. Wear orange in the crowd. I'll that's fine. At least you're supporting hockey. But yeah, it, it'll be, it would be good to get that back. Out of all the schools that you faced this year, who ragged you the most? Who was the one that got under your skin the most, home or away? Um, you know, if you want to see who ragged me the most, it would be School of Mines. Um, getting under my skin by now, I'll tell you the main reason why, <laughs> this may preempt another question, the main reason why I wear a scarf and, and dress to the nines because it makes some fans mad. And so... I don't mind if I take on all the flack on my bench. Um, I'm, they usually ask about my hair gel, how many ounces of hair gel do I use, and where'd you get your scarf, and if this is an ascot, and you know other clever uh, engineer jokes. You know, engineer jokes aren't very good generally, so that they really go at it. Um, but that's that's probably the and they they were rather ruthless this year, very unclassy comments. But um, do they get under my skin? Yeah, maybe the first two years of coaching. Because I was just done being a player, but now it's you know. It's kind of where you just kind of we saw you there when we were at the you mines. Know, I'm still not beyond blowing kisses to the crowd when we win because it feels so good to win in that arena. Um, <laughs> they maybe were that's why the hatred brews for the next year. But in all reality, it doesn't. Uh, you know. uh, with, with Texas Tech gone, are are they your main rivals now? Colorado School of the Mines. Yeah, yeah, I would. Ha- well, you know, our long time, longest standing rivalry. In a, in, a, in a very respectful way as NAU. We've carried on that tradition for more than a decade, probably about 14, 15 years. So that's my most respected rivalry. Um, when it comes to the trading off and home in, in a way, yeah, I mean, it feels good to win against <laughs> mines. <laughs> All right, fans, now it's part of the time where you guys, we submitted a, a Facebook post saying if you had any questions, questions excuse me, for a Coach Grant Harvey, now's the time. The first one comes from Christina Goppel and Alex and Julian, uh, her boys. Want to know how long and how often does the team practice? Does it change in any, any way for preparing for nationals? We practice on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 945. We've added a Monday practice, so we have three consecutive times on the ice. And, yeah, it makes a huge difference. So being on the ice twice is good. Three is um, makes you feel like you're on your sneakers, like that comfortable. So, yeah, it's, it's huge because I like my Monday practices to work on individual skills. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, 
Uh, I can get into team chemistry. Um, and that helps the whole game development. So when, if, if you're not trying to find your edges on Tuesday for the first 15 minutes of practice, you're already coming out of the gates firing. So that's, that's helpful. All righty, Christina, thank you for the question. As well as Alex and Julian, good question. This next one's from Anonymous. They didn't want to be named. Uh, so they want to know where you got your red pants and why the red pants. I don't remember where. I, I know. I think I got my red pants at Express maybe four years ago, <laughs> and they're a little bit too small, but it's the best red I could come up with. Uh, what was the follow-up? Why? Why the red pants? Well, I mean, it's Lobo Red. I have, I've got a red blazer that all the UNM coaches wear, and I find that the alternating uh, night that I would wear the red pants. And I, I mean, I guess they get a personality of their own now. People are, are request them some nights. So I don't honor personal requests for red pants, but I do promise that in the course of a weekend I will wear, wear them. Now, Coach, this is just coming from, from what I've received in the messages, but a couple of people have asked. They want to buy red pants now yeah. and have a red pants party at the Lobo Hockey Ring yeah. next year. So. I, okay, I don't, I'll help you find some. Actually, I'm trying to look for some new red pants, and two have arrived in the mail oh. in separate instances. From I was buying golf slacks, and they're much too small. So to no avail. So when I find out the answer, I will relay it to everybody. Or if, if you, you guys know where Coach can find some red yeah. pants. Let but they got, a, they got kind of big legs, so they got to fit. But if you guys wear red <laughs> pants in the, in the stands, I would be... Thoroughly impressed. <laughs> so that's a Lobo challenge for next next year. If anybody wants to wear red pants, let's let's awesome. have a let's have a red pants day. You know, uh, for coach. This, all right. So we thank you, anonymous, for that question. The next one's from George in California. He wants to know how much time do you spend on your hair, and yeah. how long? What takes you longer, a day at the gym or doing your hair? A day at the gym definitely takes longer because we're comparing 50 minutes to three minutes. If you want to ask me about my Pomeranians, they, they take up the most time for their hair. Uh, but my hair, uh, it's not as complicated as it looks, but I'm, I appreciate that you think I dedicate a lot of time to it. Because, <laughs> you know, you always look sharp, and that's, that's what you want to, you know, like today, you're looking sharp, and you always want to present yourself that way, as, you know, especially a head coach. Yeah, and yeah you I see appreciate it, that. You see it with all the coaches around UNM. Yeah. You know, you see Paul Weir. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's, a, he's a great dressed guy, and, I, and that's what I kind of followed. You, there's a couple ways that you, I could have entered the program as a former player, just show up and, and you know, wearing, you know, team warm-ups and stuff. But, you know, it is, it's, a, it's a higher position. I'm proud of being the coach, and I should dress the part and, and exude the, um, the, the seriousness and professionals I think that it takes to be a coach. All right, George, thank you for your question. Now the next one also from Anonymous. They want to know, can you describe icing? Yeah. So. Yes. Um, so Very I, confusing. I, I see, yes, see a lot of people think that's when you spray too much snow, but it actually uh, where there's a red line, you cannot throw the puck at the other end of the ice, essentially. You have to cross the red line, and then you can – throw it as far deep as you can but it prevents the game from just being one big volleyball match you're supposed to cross the red line and then throw it if you do that if you ice the puck which means you know the, the puck before the red line all the way down the puck is brought all the way your defensive zone to be uh, an infraction for that move so all right thank you uh, for that question the next one's from amanda here in albuquerque she wants to know who is your nhl team my NHL team, I've got two and they're both bad i got oilers and i got the red wings <laughs> um so oilers i was a uh, I was three years old skating around in circles. My dad's from Edmonton. I was a Wayne Gretzky. You know, he was my hero. And so they had a, a big dynasty in the 80s. And, um, yeah, and that's, that's what I liked. I also liked the Red Wings because they had uh, the first team to get Russian hockey players over. And I liked their style of hockey. So those are my two. Now, you recently went to Denver um, last week. And yeah. you saw the Oilers play. And what a win, 4-2. to two. Yeah. Um, Connor McDavid had a hat trick. So right. you must have been happy, right, seeing Connor McDavid with a hat trick? That's mainly why I go. I mean, I love the Oilers, but it's, it's a player like Connor McDavid is just a once in a generation, like a, a Sid Crosby. Uh, so it's, I, I, I watch because I'm in awe. I mean, I'm a hockey player. I, I feel like I'm fairly good. But that watching someone who's perfected their craft is, is neat for me to watch. Well, it's a, it'll be awesome tomorrow. We are, when you guys see this, it was actually yesterday. But the Ducks and the Oilers play uh this this uh, tomorrow <laughs> okay. and me and grant last year we actually saw a game together and i give up know. now i don't i we're not going to the playoffs it means less <laughs> to me luckily because i have a temper problem <laughs> oh we saw it last year so uh, but that was a fun series though i mean that was great. it was it was a great that's, that's why i love that hockey is neat yeah. yeah all right so thank you amanda for your question the next one's from glenn in santa fe if you can schedule an ncaa hockey team who would it be and why uh, playing the University of Michigan is big. I, I like them. Um, I, I, I used to 
watched them when I was younger. I remember Boston College when I was younger. Um, I, I, let's be fair about the outcome. These guys are the best of the best in the country with, with scholarships in Division One. But nevertheless, it would be neat to see how we do. Yeah. I would like to see you guys play like Notre Dame or Harvard or, you know, some big school like that. That would be pretty awesome. Though. Yeah. Even if you guys went up there, you know, just to try it out. How do you think you would do? I, I don't know. It's, you know. To be honest, I we probably keep it close within three or four goals. Um, they're just – they've got some <laughs> Canadians on there. Hey, you know, <laughs> Canadians are great. Uh, it's – we've got great players, but that's a whole different um, – caliber. I mean, some of these guys are going to need job. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Glenn, uh, for your question. We have another question that was sent uh, from Robert. He's actually from here in Albuquerque. He wants to know, he loves your Snapchat. He's a big fan of your Snapchats. What started the rants on Snapchat? Oh my gosh. I have to remember my many capacities, what I'm talking about on there. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty transparent guy. If you follow me on social media, um, you know, I, there's a personal side to Grant. You know, there's besides the coaching. I think if you if you've seen any of my work, um, I <laughs> I get frustrated about common day traffic drivers, <laughs> people. You know, like we all do. So I just uh, that's I guess my stage. You know, I can't. Uh, I've got my coaching capacity, and then I've got off ice guys. So I, I'm glad you're a fan. She's. Uh, I got to be mindful what what's going out there. This is the, the digital age. So we got we have another question. Thank you, Robert, for yours. So this one's from anonymous. I have a feeling it's it's one of your players that asked this one, but it, they asked, Coach, what's with the Pomeranians? What's with them? I don't know. They're just <laughs> such neat little dogs. I I might be the most. Uh, I'm I'm probably a walking juxtaposition in the fact of uh, my hobbies and likes. That I got an alpha coach, and then uh, I don't know. You got to have a yin and yang. So these little Pomeranians are like dear to me. So they're Mishka and Natalia. If you're watching, just kidding. Um, <laughs> they're just dear to me. I, I like these little dogs. So I've got a. And I'm an animal lover. Like a, like I've expressed before with the animal refuge. Um, I I just think they're they're innocent little souls, unlike my players. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't listen like my players sometimes. So there's a lot in common. Right. I've learned a lot from my Pomeranians and how to coach a hockey team. So <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Thank you, Anonymous, for your question. And the, the last question is also from Anonymous. But, Coach, is there, is there someone that has your heart? That's what they want to know. My, Mishka and Natalia, again, it's always <laughs> going back to the Palms. They will always have my heart. Um, yeah, and, and, and I love my sports car. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Coach. We, we, uh, I mean, I, I, you can probably think of who some of these questions are asked for, if it was a player or not. But, uh, but we want to thank the fans for, uh, for that. Um, you guys are great. Thank you. If you guys want to ask Coach any more questions, let us know at the Level Hockey Network what we can ask him for you because we want to <laughs> interview you after the Nationals too and, you know, see how you felt going into the games and yeah, uh, how it yeah, all came out. So glad to. stay tuned for that. Now it's part of the show, fans, where we want to know, Coach, if you know your players. Okay. Um, we had team captain Austin Short um, ask some of the guys some random facts. Okay. Let's see how many you can get right. Um, let's see how well you know your team. All right, the first one is... This one, um, this uh, player went to New Mexico Tech for two years before attending UNM. Yeah, AJ. Yeah. AJ, so that is correct. So uh, we'll get the little dinger noise right, Julian. All right, so we got that one right. All right, this one, his next question is, his favorite food sandwich is a Bobo sandwich. Now, I looked up what this is, and it's a, it's a sandwich from the East. So there's not too many players that this could be, but it's a sandwich from the East. Yeah, I, you know, I, I wouldn't have got this had, had there not been some previous research. But, yeah, that's, that sounds like a, a Mike answer. And Mike is the correct answer. So two for two, Coach, Bobo. two for two. Uh, it, it's a – we'll have to talk to him. What a, why a Bobo sandwich? But it's a New Yorker he, thing. He is a Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, the next question is, this local hockey player uh, listens to a Star Wars podcast at night to fall asleep. Who's the nerd on the yeah, hockey Yeah, I think team? Short is, is, has this written all over him. Austin Short. Um, no, I'm, I'm sorry, unfortunately. This one goes to Jared Ronquillo. Jared Ronquillo is the big oh, Star Wars. Uh, I would have. I mean, that kid's a wild card. <laughs> He's the kid that wears the short shorts after after games. We noticed in the sandals. 
So. He's not supposed to be wearing. He's supposed to be wearing a suit. <laughs> this is part of the uncoachable thing I've been talking about. They're supposed. He's not supposed to be doing that. He's he's an up north kid. I think what the up north kids do is they want to show you how not cold it is. Yeah, because we see your players in their suit and tie. Jeremy Marquillo comes out, hoodie, hat. Yeah, uh, I should find him. You know, we should come up with team finds. So maybe this will spawn the idea that you need to follow the rules, Jared. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the next question is, uh, this local hockey player's dad is from Mexico. Yeah, that's Fernando. Fernando. I mean, it's pretty much a given, right? Yeah. <laughs> so coach is now three and four. And uh, have you met Mr. Fernando? Does- you, he's an active um, participant on uh, the Lobo website. I think I've seen him at a game. I, he's a very devout guy uh, to the program. I, the parents are a neat part. Let me maybe take over the show here. Parents, I, I think you do a great job in supporting our team, and um, that's what makes my coaching experience so fun is, is um, how much you back the program and how invested you are uh, to, to watch your kids play. So. Now you can take the show back over. <laughs> so the show. So, no, but shout out to the parents because they're actually our biggest supporters yeah. on the Lobo Hockey Network. It's huge for them. You, yeah. you're, you're able to show them games they they can't. You know, so my my California kids, um, they yeah, the, can, they can't. The, the parents can't find every game. The Wertas are, are great. They they're big followers of us. They, yeah. they even helped us uh, get to Colorado. Uh, Miss Jackie uh, Dunlap is a is a big fan of ours. Yeah, um, that's another right. All the parents that can't see the games ordinarily. And, um, I think Jackie's got, I think, 56 kids. So, no, she can't make all the kids, uh, you know, so this is the best yeah. route. So, that's, that's it, it works out. The for parents them. are buying the merchandise. I mean, when we put oh, out the... I, I know. <laughs> when I, we put out the t-shirts, they were the first ones that... I couldn't even get myself a Ronquillo because I guess the family got future Christmas presents for everyone that hasn't been <laughs> born yet. All righty. Now, Coach, this is the last question in our, that we'll ask you. Um, this one might make you a little upset knowing that he's doing this, but uh, this local hockey player watches movies while driving. This seems like a James Boston move. James Boston, no, unfortunately, this is not. Actually, you hung out with him today. This is actually Nate Tagliagami's nasty little habit. So It's a good thing I drove to Saggio's and his mom watches, mm. will be watching this, so... Nate, you just got your car revoked. And car I'm revoked. Happy, and you're an idiot for doing that. <laughs> uh, how does that make you feel knowing that he's out there doing that? <laughs> I, I have to say I was a reckless young guy, and, and maybe I didn't grow up with needing a TV. I don't know what he's watching on there. It's confusing. <laughs> what can't wait? You know, most of it's like fine, maybe a song on YouTube, but No, he's movies. watching just, yeah. Well, I wonder what he's How watching. How much movie can you watch at like 12 minutes at a time? You f- like when you watch a movie 12 minutes at a time, don't you forget what you just watched? So maybe that's why he never finishes his movies. He maybe. just does it 12 and then has to rewind it. <laughs> he's watched the Titanic now for three years and only got halfway. Uh, so he's never got to the big important parts. So. Yeah, just really not an important part of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> we know what happened before it was made. It was, right. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, guys. Well, thank you for joining us, Coach. Uh, it was great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank Next you. week, you head out for, for nationals. It's yeah. it's time. The butterflies are coming in, right? You yeah. Just, yeah it's, it's, it. it's, a, it's a very big moment for uh, the program, um, and I feel all the butterflies for all the players. Right. So this is, like I said, well, when you get back, we definitely want to talk to you because um, it's – it's going to be a big assignment because hopefully we're talking to you and you have that national championship trophy in your hand. I yeah. mean, I, I, what, can, let me ask you something before we go. Is what, does the, what do you guys get when you do win it all? Is, is it just trophy? Is it, is it money involved? Is it? I don't know. I, you know, this is uh, – I haven't searched that far. I, if they didn't hand me – a pencil say national champion, I would be fine with it. I, I just, the achievement like everything else. I mean, your, your average hockey player um, does things for the merit and, and the value behind um, an award. I don't necessarily need to have a tangible thing to hold in my hand. It's just the accomplishment uh, would mean everything to me. And you know, for all the years that Lobos have been playing hockey, it's a payback to them. And... Um, I'm so proud of our school 
it would just mean the world to me to, to be able to pull this off. And it would finally wake Albuquerque up knowing that they have another national championship team. Here. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed with the, with the Lobo support I've had. After some of the, the uh, notoriety the program has, I've got a lot of people shaking my hand and congratulating me. And people back the Lobos. I love Al, I love Albuquerque for that reason. They If you're Lobo skiing anything, they they are they have your back and, and they support you. So I think that's what makes Albuquerque such an exceptional city is they've maybe never seen a hockey game in, in, in their life, but they're supporting. They're hard fans. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty, guys. Well, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys want to follow the Lobos on their journey, you guys can do it in many ways. You, of course, you could follow Coach Grant Harvey on his uh, on his Snapchat, his, yeah. his Instagram, yeah, yeah. his Twitter. Um, you can follow the Lobo Hockey Program on their Facebook as well. Uh, Coach, do you have the uh, website for that? That way, anybody that doesn't know, they can go on Facebook and find you guys for the uh, the Unum Hockey yes. page. I, you know, I don't know the URL, but just look up UNM Lobo Hockey, and it's got. Uh, uh, the most current picture with the turquoise jerseys. That would be the best way to differentiate. I think there's a two old sites, but um, I, I think the, the, if you type that in, it would be the first one. In the okay, page. so make sure you go to facebook.com, UNM Lobo Hockey. You can also follow all the action right here on the Lobo Hockey Network. Just head to facebook.com forward slash Lobos Hockey Network. Coach, thank you for joining Thanks. us. Don't forget, grab your uh, Nationals t- uh, merchandise. Head to pressandheart.com forward slash Lobo Hockey. Remember, all... Um, half the funds, not all, excuse me, half the funds go over to uh, the hockey team to help them next year um, in all their funds. So uh, we want to thank you. Good luck, Coach. And thank you guys for tuning in. You guys have been watching Behind the Ice right here on the Lobo Hockey Network. Take care, everybody.